Greetings and welcome to the second of our conversations with Eugene Stockton. This is part of a new series, I hope, of uh, exploring the territory that Father Eugene wants to open up, of looking at or finding an archetypal theology, something that can bind together all the peoples of the world as we think about this great mystery that we call the divine or God or Allah or uh, the various names that people have for this mystery that sits at the, at the heart of life, at the, at the creation point and also at the Omega point. Um, he's written a book called The Deep Within uh, towards an archetypal theology and that's what we hope in, hope to open up in this series. Today this is part of a short interview that I recorded with him a couple of weeks ago on the 2nd of July in fact uh, while he was down here recording the soundtrack for a documentary that I hope we can bring you next week. Um, in this the first question I asked him is that uh, in indigenous cultures they, they talk about sacred ground or sacred places. Uh, this part of the Blue Mountains where we're filming at the moment is a, a very much a sacred territory for the indigenous peoples of Australia or, or of this region at least and the question I asked him is why do the indigenous people have this belief in the sacred and we in Western culture seem to have lost it for some extent. I think, it, I think it hit me from my time studying in, the, uh, in Jerusalem where I became very conscious of our sacred land, the Holy Land, and why it is, it is very vibrant with um, something special for us because of our, um, our scriptures, our religion, our faith. And I think that Aboriginal people lived in uh, in a consciousness of the sacred for much of the time. I call this living in the myth. It's if as you're passing through the land you're aware of the stories of that land, you're aware of the sacred beings that gave form to it, and not only aware of it but you're also part of it so that you are now singing the story of that, um, so that uh, a, a piece of land isn't simply a, um, a real estate, it's, it's, it's part of the story and you're part of that story. Do you think that our Western uh, uh, civilization, where we live in houses now, you know, we, we, we've become less connected to the land, you know, we pass over it fast in a motor car or a train or an aeroplane, and whereas walking through the land, which, which you know, the mm. earlier people did before we had all these technologies, mm. gave them a, a, a much closer connection with... Well, yeah, we, we live in, a, in houses and be mindful of how insulated we are from the land. Even now, living, um, sitting in a warm room like this, we forget that it's very cold outside. Um, and even when we walk outside, our shoes insulate us from the ground. Uh, our clothes insulate us. And when we're in the car, again, another insulation. Whereas we've got to think of people who are completely bare to these elements. And uh, not only for uh, a certain time, but all the time. When you sleep, you sleep on the ground. Uh, mm. And uh, so that it's very natural that you, you are part of that environment, just mm. like birds and animals and so on. Um, I, I think that's the difference, um, that civilization does insulate us uh, from the environment. Mm. And now we look out on the environment and we might enjoy it, but we're not really part of it. Right. And, and when you talk about going to this deep within, uh, are you suggesting that the indigenous people, because of this 
this sleeping on the land and, and walking barefoot on the land and so on gave, gave them a different insight into the divine or spirituality or this mystery of, of where life comes from yeah. in us or there was a a, a a consciousness that that I mean if, if you think about living in the myth, living in the dream, dreaming you're really living as a, a participant of the great stories uh, that you learned from your elders and that you celebrated in, in corroborees. Um, and it's still going on. You, uh, you are, and you are an instrument of uh, keeping it going. You sing the song because this uh, keeps the dreaming going. Um, so that um, it's very dramatic. And you're part of that drama, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what what are your great hopes? Um, do, do you see see a coming together through through what you you're writing about and thinking about now? This deep within and this archetypal theology, a something that can embrace all religions. Um, can you perhaps explain a little bit about that? Well, from my experience working with Aborigines, I used to be a chaplain um, uh, to urban Aborigines, I found that when they engaged in conversation, it was a, a, I realised it was a real art form. When an Aboriginal is conversing with another person, he speaks from deep within himself to the deep within yourself. There's a meeting of uh, persons at a deep level. Um, and uh, it's amazing how direct their conversation can be. Um, and <coughs> I realise that this comes from the fact that they're conscious of the I at the base of all their consciousness. And um, transposing that now to people of other religions, um, I think if we are able to engage in conversation with them at the same level of depth, um, that we we see there not the differences between the religions, but the commonality that uh, binds them together. Mm. We see people who are deeply religious in their own way doing exactly the same kind of thing that I'm doing in my way, in my religion. Mm. You, you imply there that we've lost something, you know, later civilizations have lost something in this ability to communicate at this, this deep eye level. Uh, why do you think that's happened? Well, we've lost something because we've gained something else. We've advanced our own rationality um, and um, all our thinking is at a surface level it's very rational, it's very scientific. Um, I read the newspaper today and um, there are all sorts of concepts on the page. Um, there, um, uh, they speak about the polls taken in favour of the political leaders and so on. Uh, so much is reduced to numbers. Now, because we're so adept at this surface level, and we are very clever, and we and it has brought us great advances. That we've tended to neglect that other part of ourselves. Uh, that um, and it's it's still there. It's not that we've lost it; it's there, but we very rarely go down into it. And one of the things I would um, contend is that we should be um, we should try to. There's an ease, if we want to, there is an ease to going from the surface to the depth. Um, it's, the depth is not out of, con, out of uh, reach, but it's just that we're not, we don't often go down there. Mm -hmm. And this is really part of prayer. I mean, prayer is going into the depth of oneself. And when we become, become more accustomed to that, we'll find ourselves being able to move quite easily uh, from one mode of thought to another mode of thought. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so it's not something we've lost, it's something that's become uh, crowded out by our cleverness. Um, you've only got to look at uh, IT technology mm -hmm. to, to um, get an instance of that. 